Hi, I'm Russell Sturgis. I'm the founder and principal of EAP Mentor. Welcome to the next blog in our series that I'm doing on the eight principles of love. Really what uh, this series of blogs is discussing is the um, underpinning philosophical principles behind the Enhancers Awareness Program. And as I explained earlier, this is based on the eight Beatitudes from the Sermon on the Mount. Um, and uh, so far we've discussed um, the first two, which are um, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The second one was um, blessed are those that mourn, for they shall be comforted. And today what we're looking at is um, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. It's an interesting word, meekness, because immediately when um, the word meekness um, is, is expressed, the sorts of things that people immediately associate with that is this, this idea of weakness, um, the fact that somebody um, could be afraid or doubtful or powerless or conquerable, um, that maybe um, in meekness somebody's exposed or they're insecure, um, etc. And and so we have this this whole idea that weakness is uh, sorry meekness is actually something that that should be avoided. And so here we have this beatitude that's encouraging the adoption of of meekness. And uh, um, and of course, in the blog, I write about the etymology of the word or the origins of the word um, meekness, and um, and the sorts of words that then come to the surface based on its origin are words like forbearing, um, temperance, unassuming, lowly, yielding, and teachable. And of course, the one that sort of encompasses all of that is humility or being humble. And so uh, as much as all of those things uh, can be perceived to be weakness, particularly from somebody who um, really is buying into positions of power or um, success or being driven and all those sorts of things, um, possessing those qualities from that perspective could be perceived to be weakness. From the perspective of spiritual values, uh, this becomes a really important um, quality that one needs to possess. And particularly given that what we're talking about here um, is the journey through the dark night of the soul, remembering that the dark night of the soul is, is going through this, this transition from being totally caught up in the world of illusion to moving into, um, dare I say, and this is based on the, the first of the Beatitudes, the kingdom of heaven, which is, is about being aligned with um, spiritual values. It's about being aligned with a lifestyle that um, instead of, um, being one that's immersed in suffering and pain is a lifestyle that has a sense of peace and joy and um, that has a sense of contribution and fulfillment and those sorts of things. So what we have is, is this whole idea that depending on which perspective you're taking determines what the, the, the nature of meekness is really all about. And um, in the 14th um, century etymology of the word meekness, um, it developed a, a stronger association with this, this concept of humility. Um, and it gives us um, a little bit more of an appreciation of why this beatitude in its full um, version says, blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth. And, and by the 14th century, we start seeing uh, the word meekness being associated with bended knees, um, being prostrate on the ground. Um, the sorts of things that you would kind of associate with meeting a king or, or uh, somebody of um, um, higher um, authority, I guess, is that you um, put yourself into this lowly position and, and so what we have is this, this situation where inheriting the earth is the position that you take in the state of meekness. 
and uh, and so once again it helps to really fuel this whole idea that this is is seen as um, as being weak. Um, the Earth um, has to do with simple things. Earthiness is about um, coming down to grassroots. It's about the absolute basics, as opposed to the things of the material world, um, which is associated with wealth and power um, and love and fame. You know, this whole idea of desiring worth, being motivated to accumulate, um, um, the the ability to achieve power, the ability to find love and and to build fame or um, the opposite of those things which is um, um, not having those things um, and and uh, desperately in need of them or trying to avoid them in some circumstances ultimately what meekness does is that it brings us to the point and when it comes off the back of poor in spirit and mourning. Remember that that poor in spirit um, was this place, and mourning was this place where those things to which we were attached have been taken away from us. And I talked about the intervention of of justice and aging and time and um, um, and the the wheel of fortune. This this whole idea that 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 um, chance or fortune um, could be involved in taking these things away from us. And of course, we've just talked about this whole idea of um, the impact of the um, global pandemic that's happening, COVID-19, and the fact that people have had so much taken away from them. They've been forced into this place um, of asking what I think is the ultimate meek question, and that is, what can I do different to avoid having to suffer this or like this again? And I think that many people who are in uh, the place of experiencing the difficulties associated with COVID-19, whether it's um, social isolation, um, whether it's um, the inability to do the things that you normally do, whether it's not being able to express your thrill through your work, and of course, the financial impact that it's having on people, um, it has forced some people, and, and to some extent, I believe all of us, um, into this place of asking this question, what could I do different to what I've done in the past to avoid um, having to suffer like this ever again? And... Uh, um, I would like to suggest to you that in life's journey, we all get to that point, um, particularly when we have things that happen to us um, that are our personal pandemics, so as to speak. And so this is when we have, um, we, we hit walls and we're in this place of either um, compassion fatigue, burnout or depression, um, or maybe we're being confronted by a lifestyle disease and in some cases, Cases that may even be the impact of or the or the prospect of death. Maybe you're dealing with um, a relationship that's come to an end and 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 it's painful. Um, maybe you're dealing with bankruptcy or issues that are, are really stressful stressful around finances as a personal experience. And of course, we've all been dealing with these things as individuals at different times through our life journey. And and meekness is when we um, come to that question question and that is how can I avoid experiencing the pain and the suffering that goes with these things that goes with um, depression lifestyle disease bankruptcy divorce and all those things that it is that we experience loss of employment as part of our life journey and of course when these things happen to us that's the time when we're brought to our knees and sometimes that's the point where we're prostrate on the ground. It's it's that that whole um, thing where uh, instead of riding high, um, all of a sudden we're brought to our knees and we're in these very very painful places. And and it's the point where we're humble. It's the point where we're teachable. It's the point where. We don't have the ability to get up again and, and to, to um, try and recreate it all again. It's like we, we've reached this impasse, this impossibility, and, and we don't know where else to go. 
Um, there's quite a, a, a common saying um, that, that many of you will be familiar that says, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. And, and this is um, ultimately the state of meekness. The state of uh, meekness is the, the point at which you become the ready student. And of course, that means that this is the point at which um, in, in, in being prepared to take on new understanding, to take on new knowledge, to become more aware. And that's literally what's going on here is that you have this insatiable desire to want to enhance your awareness. Um, of course, um, it's going to go without saying, given that this is called the Enhancers Awareness Program, that this is the ideal time to be in contact with one of our mentors, because that's what we do. We step in at this particular point when you're in this place and we help you to enhance your awareness. And of course, um, the success of our work actually requires you to be in this place of meekness so that you can take on what it is that we have to offer. Now, at this point in the journey of the work that we do, there's two things in particular that as an EAP mentor, we're able to um, um, help you with, and they require meekness for us to be able to um, serve you in these ways. And the first one has to do with um, this whole idea um, of um, a narrative or the story, and I've talked about this. And, and at this point in the journey, um, the point of being meek is the point at which um, your EAP mentor would help you to identify a seven-year-old narrative um, that you run that even at 90 years of age could be still um, pulling your strings, could be still dictating um, how you turn up and be in the world. And invariably, the narrative of the seven-year-old is a belief um, of poor self-worth. It's a belief of not being lovable or um, um, of, of, of not um, fitting in or whatever it is. Um, we, we each have our unique version of this, but ultimately it's, it's a belief that I'm not enough, that I'm not good enough. And, uh, and this is something that is well and truly established by the age of seven and becomes the foundation to the belief that we keep on running about ourselves. So uh, one of the first thing that's going to happen here is that your um, um, mentor is going to help you to identify that narrative and help you see the way in which it's been responsible for causing much of the suffering um, and the pain that it is that you're experiencing as part of your life reality. Now, what's happened is you've created a whole lot of um, behaviours, habits and um, neural pathways, if we can now introduce the, that whole idea, that um, is the basis of how you live your life. And it's, it's the foundation to you continuing to get what you've always got. It's this whole idea that life keeps on turning up, um, offering you the same thing. And it doesn't matter, you, you can change jobs, you can change partners, you can change homes, you can try to manipulate your external environment. But what happens is because the narrative is intrinsic to these neural programs, what happens is you keep on recreating the reality. And so you keep on finding yourself dealing with the same work, you the same um, um, employment scenarios, the same relationship scenarios, different people, same stuff being played out. And so by being able to identify this new narrative or, or a new sense of who you are, um, based on this narrative, you have the ability to start to create a new reality. And, and, and so this is part of now the awareness strategy. Um, and of course, what's required here is the ability to now begin to imagine your life in a whole different way. Um, and of course, this is based on um, moving beyond the, the adage that says, if you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always got. So this is about beginning to imagine doing something different. And of course, because we have a life habit of doing things the way we have, it's not always easy for us to become more aware of alternatives. And of course, this becomes part of the role of an EAP mentor, is to help you to identify uh, new ways of being able to express your life and, and to help you find ways that really speak 
for you. Um, so this isn't about what speaks for the mentor, but their skill is, is helping you to identify what it is that you would like to have as your new reality and then helping you to identify strategies, really clear sequential steps that would make it possible for you to be able to um, achieve and to be able to sustain and maintain a consciousness that results in, instead of suffering and pain, a reality where there's fulfillment and joy and a sense of inner peace. Um, and um, this whole idea that um, you can wake up with a sense of loving the life that you live. It is real. That type of existence is possible. And, and this is a very crucial point in, in making the transition. So this ability to, to come to this place of being me, which is being teachable, which requires this degree of humility, um, is absolutely paramount in being able to begin to create a new reality in beginning to imagine what a new experience of life might look like. So um, this is the, the, the third of the um, um, Beatitudes. The fourth one, which we'll be looking at in our, our next um, blog, is um, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, um, for they shall be filled. And, um, and this is about um, having taken this knowledge. Um, it, it, it's about building a sense of, of self-worth. It's, it's based on the idea that you're creating a reality of having a greater sense of value, a greater sense of self-worth. And what happens um, from this perspective is that <clears throat> you um, um, start to live life um, being kind to yourself as a result of having created the vision of, of what life would look like being kinder. But from that, uh, the world I am is the world I create. And so what happens is you then start to express kindness in how you relate to other people and you express kindness in terms of how you relate to the planet. And this is about uh, righteousness. This is really about justice. And, and justice is about kindness, kindness to yourself, to others and the planet. We'll be discussing that in our next, um, in our next um, um, blog. If you'd like to know more about EAP and this work, please go to um, www.eapmentor.com where you'll be able to find out about our program and our mentors, what it is that we do. We have a great Facebook page that if you go and check out Enhances Awareness Program on Facebook, you'll find um, something where each each day nearly we have something new around mindfulness and, um, and awareness. And um, and from there, from our, from our um, web page, you can then go on and subscribe to our monthly newsletter, Mindful Living, which has wonderful um, tips and ideas about how to live life mindfully. Hey, thank you for coming on board and seeing um, this in our um, um, series of blogs on the eight principles of, of love. Hope you've enjoyed it. And I'll speak to you again soon. Bye.